So the idea is that I just bought a box of the new Magic the Gathering product, Double Masters. And I've got my play mat, and I've got my webcam, and I'm ready to shoot a box opening video. Unfortunately, someone has other ideas for how I need to be spending my time. So let's see if I can persuade Puck to not sit in the middle of the space that I need to open packs of magic cards and maybe I can do this. So let's just reach over here and grab the box. There are a couple, uh, since it's double masters, you get double box toppers. This is a Court of Calling and a Wrath of God, which are awesome. Now, kitty, you go over there. Stay over there. Now just curl up over there. This is not going to last. I don't think there's much of any way he stays out of the video the whole time. But we're going to give it a shot. Okay. So this is my box topper. We're going to open that last. And... We've got three stacks of eight packs. Let's see what we get. Oh, and this piece of crap. All right. So, Packa Wanna. Dun, 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 dun. Meh, 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 meh. Urzaland. Commons. Meh, meh, meh. Okay. Goblin Guide and Brutaclad. That's a. Ooh. Okay, so those are two pretty good foils. Aethersworn Canonist um, and Parasitic Strix. So, Aethersworn Canonist is a modern staple, and Parasitic Strix is a legacy combo is a piece of a legacy combo deck so not a bad pack um Urzalans are always a buck or so goblin guide the value on it's in the crapper right now but i expect it'll go up and hey don't you bite me and brutaclad well can't win them all all right meh 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 Meh, meh, meh. <laughs> uh, looks like it's going to be a Parasitic Strix kind of day. Quartz Apper, Treasure Mage, Valor Stance, bleh. Filterland, Oblivion Stone. Okay, these are pretty good. Um, the bottom is out on these uh, Filterlands right now because there are going to be so many of them opened. But they're never going to be worthless. And honestly, I need a couple of Oblivion Stones for decks. Golem Skin Gauntlets and Metal Skinner. Meh. Ooh. The Changeling Token's kind of fun. Doo -dee doo. Blah, 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 blah. Ooh. All right. Mishra's Bauble and Basalt Monolith. Those are two really good uncommons. Mishra's Bauble is just a consistent value and basalt monolith that thing's been reprinted several times and it was already back up to like six bucks before this set came out so that's not bad mystic gate another filter land and merciless eviction glad i bought a couple of those Ooh, foil basalt monolith i expect this will be decent because this card hasn't been printed in foil that many times yes i know i'm sorry i'm talking and i'm not petting you if he had opposable thumbs, he could help me open packs, and that would be, you know, better. But he, ooh, oh no, Frogify, not Pongify. Everflowing Chalice, um, I'm glad I got one of these because I didn't have one, and I want this for a Kenrith King Arthur themed deck that I'm working on. No kitty. And another Urs is mine. No kitty. 
No, you can't go there either. Ooh, Metamorphos. This thing had gotten stupid expensive. That was my iPad that the cat just knocked off my desk. And Beacon of Unrest and Geist of St. Traft. Now, I wanted a Geist for my collection because I didn't have any anymore, but still feels bad money-wise. Meh, meh. Oh, wait. Foils, even crap foils, go over here. <laughs> Another Urzaland. Sir, nope, that's junk. Hey, buddy. Yes, you're my sweet boy. Is it charm? Golem artisan. Blah blah blah. Uh, Dark Depths is good, and Tempered Steel is. I mean, Tempered Steel used to be a thing, but it's not anymore. This is a. This is. A pretty good looking dark depths I actually like that art better than the original yeah hey get off the keyboard stop that come on cat sorry hang on all right I'm back okay you can be there I'll move everything around to make life more convenient for you because that's what I do. I know my role, just like The Rock told me. <laughs> Don't lick the monitor. <sighs> okay. A braid is good. It's probably one of the better commons in the set. Chatter of the Squirrel is great just because I like making squirrels. Ravenous Intruder, Fatal Push is always good. Spellskite, um, this one also in the tank price-wise right now, but Avenger Zendikar, Commander Staple, Frogify, Executioner's Capsule. That looks like a th this looks like a Kaladesh art style Thopter. It's pretty. Common, 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 common. Springleaf drum. This thing used to be several dollars, but it's been reprinted into oblivion. Another Ether Sworn Canonist and a Grim Lava Mancer. Wow, those are some feel bad rares, money wise. <laughs> yeah, that was not a pack that was going to make its money back. Um, so far, we're not really killing it. I don't think we've seen a single mythic yet. And we're a third of the box. Chromatic Star is decent. Uh, Hinder, Hidden Stockpile, and Onaganata. Oof, Shamanic Revelation. That one stings. And Blink Moth Nexus. We're going to need a foil mythic to make this pack worth anything. We did not get that. We got a Core Clan Rampager and Crushing Vines Foil. Yeah, that pack stunk. Let's see. We're a third of the way through, and have we seen a single mythic? Oh, Avenger of Zendikar is a mythic. Okay, Dark Depths is a mythic. Saint Geist of St. Traft is a mythic. You know, with exception of Geth, Lord of the Vault, I think I've gotten all of the really value-free mythics in the set price-wise. So, yay me. Do 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 another abrade. Oh, calling Dias is a bleh. Rex Sage, Culling Dias, and Pyrewild Shaman, still nothing. Okay, Stoneforge Mystic is decent. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Okay, so we're not gonna gripe too much about this. Stone Hero Giant is bleh. Stoneforge Mystic is great. It went way up in price after it got re after it got unbanned in modern. So that's good. Everflowing Chalice, like I said, I wanted it for a commander deck. The reason I'm loving a foil oubliette is this is a pauper staple. It's been one of the most popular cards in that format. And I believe this is the first foil printing 
of that card. It's an old Arabian Nights card, and I don't think there was ever a foil version of it, so these should command a premium, if not, if not immediately, at least in a year or so. Another Urzaland. Vampire Hexmage. That's not terrible. Thopter Foundry. Pinted Prism. Yeah, there's no money there. Boon Reflection. And Phyrexia Metamorph. Okay. Metamorph's a good card. Wow. Argivian Restoration and Flare Husk. Those are junk. Yeah, we're very much moving into the boy, I hope my box toppers are good territory because we're not hitting the value in the box itself okay uh mana reflection is good though this card was really expensive two weeks ago and skithrix this is the first reprint for skithrix so this ain't bad all right that pack was pretty good that's i don't know what these are going for now that they've been reprinted but I think Mana Reflection was 20 or 30, and Skithrix was 20 or 30, so this is probably 25 bucks now. And then it'll all go back up. The thing with these Masters sets is that the cards in them that see play drop like stones once the set's released, but then they go, they go back up, and some of them pretty quickly. So... If you can stomach the initial outlay, they tend to be decent investments. And if you play Commander or play older formats, there's always decent stuff in the uh, Foil Mishra's Bobble. Does not hurt my feelings. Rares are Awakening Zone and Greater Good. Both of these are fine. Um, Greater Good was expensive before it got a reprint a year or so ago. I think Awakening Zone is still a few bucks. Gleaming Barrier, who cares? But a Foil Mishra's Bobble is good. So, alright. That's not bad. We definitely still need to hit some significant rares or mythics to make the to make the box worth it. But, eh, we could get there. I mean, look, it only takes it only takes one box topper. Sorry. That's cat butt in the computer. Thanks, kitty. At least he's not licking his butt, all right? None of those uncommons are worth anything. Adaptive Automaton, nothing. Conjurer's Closet is a good one to keep around because it's a commander staple. And those are junk rare, junk foils. Most of my foils are going to be... I mean, most of your foils are going to be junk, just because the majority of them are going to be commons and uncommons. Doo -dee -doo, doo -dee -doo. Expedition map. That's the first expedition map I've seen, and that's a little bit of a surprise at a common. I would have expected to see more of those already. Huh, Riddlesmith. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. I don't know this card, but it this would be pretty good in my um, Sahili artifact deck. Braids. Um, it's not worth anything. It's like one of the least valuable rares. But I wanted one. Oof. Wow, if you're going to get two legendary creatures and you really don't want to make any money off of them, Braids and Tuk Tuk the Explorer are definitely the ones to get because they are worth nothing. These Voice of Resurgence Elemental tokens were going for like $8 a piece when that set was in standard. I didn't have any. Okay. Let's see what we got here. It's my third Parasitic Strix of the day. Path to Exiles, decent. Savageborn Hydra. This card has sometimes been strangely expensive. Terastodon is not so much. Foil Teamer Battle Rage. This sees a fair amount of commander play, I think. Be really good in Feather the Redeemed. If you don't play Magic, you don't give a flying shit about any of these things that I'm saying. And if you play a lot of commander, you already know everything I'm saying, but... 
I mean, look, I can only watch my cat lick his paw so much. Another abraid. Treasure Keeper. This is a fun card, especially in Limited. Mana Echoes. Um, that's a It's a mythic, but it's not one of the big money mythics. But it's a good card in... It's a really good card in Commander. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you may add an amount of colorless mana equal to the number of creatures you control that share a creature type with it. So, you know, two red and two, it's primarily going to be seen in goblin decks but dragons too endless atlas crusader of odric mirror retriever blah hey 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 don't be all up in my foils now i know i've been talking trash about how they're not worth anything but okay so let's recap we're two-thirds of the way through how many mythics are we at two three four five mythics now jesus cat drive me crazy now what with it being double masters my assumption has been all along that you'll get double the mythics you expect out of a normal box and i usually expect three or four probably two to four mythics is reasonable expectation so i'm expecting you know anywhere from four to eight so we're at five that's a decent place to be and i think like i said except for geth lord of the vault i think we've got all the really worthless mythics already so maybe there'll be money in this last stack because so far this is a this is a box that we're gonna make our money money back off of Lightning Greaves and Urzalands. Thank you for proving me wrong once again, wizards. Karthus Tyrant of Jund is also a nearly worthless mythic because the price of this has been bottomed out by two reprints in a year. And Bosch, Iron Golem, which just got played on a Game Nights episode that I saw to pretty good effect. I'm still probably not going to play it. Might of the Mass. Ooh, Foil Manamorphose. Our Foil Uncommons, I think, have been better than most of our rares. Uh, foil Manamorphose is going to be is going to be good. That's definitely a couple of bucks. Olvenwald Mysteries, Coldotha Flame Fiend, Chief of the Foundry. Eh, I think it's like a dollar. Whew, well of ideas. There's a stinker. Voice of Resurgence, downgraded to rare in this set. It was a mythic when it first came out. Weapon Surge, Costly Plunder, whoo, junky junk. Um, worm Coil Token. Tokens are typically worthless nowadays because, well, they're typically worthless nowadays. But Worm Coil Tokens, the tokens that Worm Coil Engine makes when it dies, they tend to have a little bit of value so if you have a local game store that's open right now and you see a bunch of draft chaff lying around and some of them include death touch or lifelink to worm tokens you want to pick those up another urzaland and what i mean by draft chaff is a lot of people after they play in a draft if they they only keep the rares so they'll just leave their commons uncommons and tokens lying on the table for anybody who wants them so it's not like you're swiping stuff that actually belongs to anybody they've left it there for the buzzards like you and i wow that one stinks okay foil treasure mage i guess there's worse things in the world foil yavamaya's embrace Sure. That's literally never going to see play in any of my decks. Because if the best thing I've got to play in a deck is a is an 8 mana aura that takes control of a creature and gives it plus 2, plus 2, and trample, then I've got... It's a bad scene. If that's the worst thing I can do... Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do
Brainstorm. Brainstorm's another one of those cards. It's always gonna hover around a buck. So you may as well keep them. Treasure Mage. Filterland. Hey, oh man. So I saw a sword. I thought, hey, and then I saw a sword of war and peace. And I was like, oh man. Okay. I'm down with a foil brainstorm. Um Full brainstorms used to be like fifty to seventy-five dollars. They're way cheaper now because the card's been reprinted to death. But it's still not nothing. It's not clear shot, for example. This is kind of a disappointing box so far. So hopefully we'll crush the last couple of packs and come back and truly get killer pulls in our box topper because a dual caster mage and a swift blade vindicator is a sure way to make somebody feel terrible about paying eight dollars for a pack of magic cards dual caster mage could be such a great card it could absolutely be a five or ten dollar rare if they would just stop reprinting it in two sets a year um, yeah another expedition map oh pongify not that I mean pongify is usually a couple of bucks but I didn't have one and I needed one wow inkwell leviathan Okay, Toxic Deluge is a good card, and it's not worthless. Actually, I think this had gotten up back up to about 20 bucks. I'm sure it's five now. Uh, Foil Fierce Empath. Foil Mishra's Factory. Eh, it's fine. We got two packs left. Weapons Trainer. Bleh. Crop Rotation. Um, I like that art on Crop Rotation. It's not my favorite art, but it's good. <laughs> Another Filter Land. Oh, okay. Academy Ruins. That card's good. Ooh, Foil Lightning Greaves is good. Alright, that pack was pretty good. Academy Ruins, I think this version's like down to $8, but Academy Ruins kind of lives around the $20 mark. So, I'm not going to gripe about it. I'm not going to do cartwheels. But, one, because I can't do cartwheels. Ooh, I needed a cranial plating, so that's good. <sighs> Ad nauseum. Ooh, that's not good for my bat. last rare. Foil Conjurer's Closet, alright, that's okay. Yeah, so... What? Okay, Academy Ruins. Hey, kitty. I need you to stay down there for a minute. You can't see this cuteness over here, can you? See, he's got... He gets up on his back legs and put his, puts his front legs on my thigh. And says, hey, pick me up. Pick me up. And we, he has all his claws, but we put these things on his front paws called soft paws to keep him from shredding me, us. Um, Dark Depths is cash. Skithrix is cash. Mana Echo is a few bucks, I think. I'm just going through here to see where the money is. I'm kind of pulling the things that I'm pretty sure are more than five bucks. Or at least are usually more than five bucks. All the filter lands are usually. Alright. Yeah. Still don't think we got to. Ad nauseum is usually a few dollars. Can you hear the suffering that is going on? Oh my goodness. Alright. Come here. there so that leaves us with our box topper now 
these will not be foil because they don't do that in the regular boxes. Those are just in the $100 a pack VIP packs, which I did not spring for. So let's see what we've got here. Drum roll, please. Cat is completely disinterested. Okay, Blood Moon's not bad. I think it's going for about 20 bucks. I love this art. I think this art is fantastic on Blood Moon. All right, what do we got? All right, here's what we're going to do. Gonna pull the Blood Moon out. Now, okay, Dark Confidant. Um, it's not my favorite Dark Confidant art. I really like the Skrillex Dark Confidant from Modern Masters 2. But I do think that somebody was saying on, a, I think it's on the Commander Smith's podcast, they were saying that this reminds them of Grima Wormtongue from Lord of the Rings. And I totally get that. This looks like some snaky bastard sitting behind a throne just pouring crap, talking crap into a ruler's ears. So, I don't know what this is going for. I expect it's probably 50 bucks. Um, I also can't see where I put my phone because there's a bunch of packs of magic card wrappers all strewn around my desk. So, I don't know. I will check all that and I'll put the... I don't know. I'll put the total value somewhere. If you liked seeing me do this, I buy a fair amount of magic product. If this is something you're interested in seeing me do more of, let me know. Give a brother a shout. And uh, say goodbye to the nice people, Puck. Come on. Look up. Look at the camera. Nope. Being a cat. All right. Bye, y'all.